Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned until the end for a special offer. Hello, dear friends. Today's tutorial is going to focus on a popularly requested topic, which is how to prepare reference photos for painting. This stage of the painting process is something that often gets overlooked because it doesn't really fit into a neat, compelling time lapse and it's not very visually interesting to look at in a tutorial, but taking your time to prepare adequate reference photos can help lay down a strong foundation for your painting and make the entire oil painting process go a lot more smoothly. As with all my paintings, the first step always begins in the sketchbook. I knew I had an upcoming gallery deadline to prepare for, so I tried out a few different concept sketches to see which idea spoke to me. While I sketch, I'm gathering reference photos from various online sources like Pinterest, Unsplash, and Google Images. During this brainstorm session, I came across a screenshot from the 2010 film adaptation of Alice in Wonderland that really stood out to me. I particularly loved how they visually addressed the talking flower heads and how the face is so elegantly embedded inside the rose petals. Right then, I knew I had found the subject for my painting and I just quickly sketched out a small thumbnail to conceptualize how I wanted to create my own rendition of a face inside a flower. I've always been a fan of the dripping slash melting effect, which you can see a lot in my earlier works. But for this one, I wanted to see if I could push myself to render it using more classical realism style influence. As you can see here, in the first iteration of this idea, I had planned on a simple composition with a single floating flower head amidst a starry evening sky. This idea will continue to evolve and change as time goes on, but first let's open up Photoshop to blend some images together. My first step is to crop this screenshot and frame just the pale pink rose in the center of the composition. I knew I would be using an 8x10 inch wood panel for this piece, so I used an 8x10 aspect ratio for the cropping. Then I found a reference photo I had saved years ago, which had a camera angle and lighting setup that matched the row screenshot quite nicely. So I used the lasso tool to copy the face of that photo and pasted it as a new layer on top of my flower screenshot. I lowered the new layer's opacity to 50% and lined it up to the layer underneath as best as I could. Then I dialed the layer's opacity back to 100% and used a layer mask and a soft blending brush to erase some of this layer's background so the face can blend nicely into the flower and replace the original face. Lastly, I adjusted the color balance of the face to match the rosy pink tones of the flower, and I adjusted the contrast of both layers to give the piece more dramatic and eye-catching lighting. Next, I imported this blended photo as a JPEG into Procreate on my iPad, and I started to manually draw in some edits. My references always end up being treated first in Photoshop to do the photo editing, masking, and blending, and then I prefer to use Procreate for any digital painting or drawing. My process works this way simply because I'm more familiar with Photoshop's editing tools and I prefer to only use Procreate's painting and drawing tools, as I'm still fairly new to Procreate. Of course, you can also exclusively use Procreate for everything or just use Photoshop. It all depends on what you prefer. During my time ideating in Procreate, I decided that my first composition was too simple and I wanted to incorporate more leaves into the piece to give it a surreal still life kind of vibe rather than just have the flower head floating in a dark abyss. So I gathered some more reference photos of rose bushes, rose leaves, and rose buds to supplement my concept sketch. I also felt like the color temperatures in my concept painting were feeling a bit too disjointed, meaning the flower head was composed of only warm pink tones, whereas the leaves were exclusively green, making the two components feel like they were copied and pasted next to each other, rather than belonging in the same environment. In the reference photo on the top left, I loved how the pink rose petals showed hints of green, so I decided to incorporate that into my sketch as well by manually painting some light green tones over certain parts of the petals to give the color temperature relationship some more variety. 
but the piece still felt a bit too exclusively pink and green, so I decided to add a little bee friend to keep her company. The bee introduces a new element to the visual narrative, and it also incorporates a small touch of some bright yellow tones as an accent to the current pink and green heavy color palette. After adding the bee, it's now time for the final touches. This is a great time to play around and just have fun. The best thing about experimenting digitally first is the relatively low risk. You can always control Z, you can always save different versions of a piece and compare them side by side. And best of all, you can iron out all the kinks before you start physically oil painting, where it will be much more difficult to fix or repaint things should you change your mind. I decided to get rid of all the stars, but keep the dark black background as it allowed the subject to stand out more. And finally, with this finished digital concept sketch and my collection of all the reference photos, I was ready to start on the physical painting. I adhered some rings of masking tape to the back of an 8 by 10 inch wood panel, then pressed the panel onto a large drawing board where I can set it on my easel more easily. Then I used a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil with red colored lead and a kneaded eraser to manually draw the outlines of the piece directly onto the panel. Because the panel was pre-primed with acrylic gesso, the red lead can lift off of it very easily with the kneaded eraser. I chose red for the line colors because it will interact nicely with whatever oil colors I place on top of it, as the piece is mostly reddish pink tones anyway. And the kneaded eraser helps lift the lead off the panel without creating messy eraser shavings. For paintings of this small scale, I prefer redrawing the lines directly onto the panel because it allows me to revisit the composition from scratch after becoming familiarized with it during the photo editing and procreate digital painting process. There's a stiffness that can result from simply blending photographs together, and by drawing everything from scratch one more time, I can tweak or exaggerate certain lines and compositional elements to create more interesting gestures and fantasy-like proportions. It also helps me avoid copying the photo too methodically, which can at times border on tracing. And that about wraps up today's video. There's a second part to this video coming up shortly that will feature the oil painting time lapse, so stay tuned for that one. Also, if you want to see a more thorough 60 minute version of this tutorial that will incorporate the digital reference photo preparation, as well as the traditional oil painting tips, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash happydartist. And as usual, my never ending sale in my shop is still going on as always. So if you want 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes. All available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. I wanted to quickly thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and the art community. I've actually enjoyed using Squarespace for four years now to build and host my online shop and website. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist for 10% off your first purchase. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.